There's a new study that criticizes normal vitamin B12 blood levels and how they can be directly linked to brain damage. Let's look at what exactly the researchers found and what this means for your diet and supplement protocol. So this team of neurologists from the University of California, San Francisco, looked at more than 200 seniors who were considered healthy. Their average age was around 71 and their average B12 blood levels were around 415, which is well within the normal range. By the way, the official cutoff for deficiency in the US is 148. So these people were nowhere near what we would call deficient. The goal was to see if B12 levels that are still technically normal could affect the brain. Keep in mind that B12 is water soluble and we get it mainly from animal foods. And it's not only needed to make red blood cells, but also involved in the production of the fatty coating that insulates our nerves. So low levels can directly harm your brain and nervous system. To measure this effect, the researchers didn't just look at blood levels, they also ran a bunch of brain-related tests, like nerve testing, brain MRIs, and tests for specific brain injury markers. In terms of B12, they separated blood markers into two types. B12 that is attached to a transport protein called transcobalamin. This is the active form that can actually enter your cells, and it's also known as holotranscobalamin. And B12 that is stuck to another protein called haptocorin. This form cannot easily get into your cells and is more of an inactive form and also known as holohaptocorin. The difference turned out to be crucial because people with lower active B12, even though their total B12 looked fine, had slower signaling speed in their nerve tests, slower reaction times, and more white matter damage on MRI scans. To quote the paper, our findings are of critical importance for rethinking the biologically sufficient B12 levels. The theoretical model we are proposing with this work is that inadequate amounts of vitamin B12 could induce neurological deficits at a threshold that is higher than the one in current use. So what they're saying is basically that until now, blood tests will usually say your B12 level is fine as long as it's above the deficiency cutoff. But this research indicates that your brain may start to suffer even before your B12 drops that low. Keep in mind that total B12 equals active plus inactive B12, but many benefits of it come only from the active part. The problem is that most labs only measure total levels, which allows for all kinds of combinations of active plus inactive B12. This is also important because another surprising finding was that people with high levels of the inactive form had more of the tau protein in their blood. Tau is a marker of nerve fiber damage, and it's often associated with Alzheimer's disease. That means both too little active B12 as well as too much inactive B12 were linked to less healthy brains. The reason B12 is so important for healthy aging is because it is absorbed in the small intestine but needs a helper molecule called intrinsic factor which is made in the stomach. Older people often produce less stomach acid and less intrinsic factor, so their absorption goes down even if their diet stays the same. The practical takeaway is really that if you get a B12 blood test, you always also want to test active B12, so again, holotranscobalamin, along with it. It gives a much better picture of whether your tissues are actually getting enough. If your active B12 is on the lower end, even if your total levels look fine, then that's a red flag. There are also a few indirect markers that some people prefer when they talk about testing for B12. So things like methylmalonic acid, MMA, which is a small substance that your body makes as part of normal metabolism. Its levels increase when you don't have enough B12, which can also be tested for. And of course you have homocysteine, which is a harmful amino acid that your body makes as it breaks down protein. B12 is also needed to keep homocysteine levels under control and high readings can be an indicator of a B12 or also a B9 issue. Now, of course, this is just a research paper and we still need more data to confirm everything but the results definitely make sense. And it's a reminder that vitamins aren't just about avoiding extreme deficiencies, but that the different types matter and that the line between enough to avoid a deficiency and enough to keep your brain healthy can be very different. If you want more info on vitamin B12 supplements and the different forms, make sure to check out the description for related videos. I will also link a few free resources and my programs that talk about supplementation and diet planning in much more detail. They will help you if you're dealing with things like chronic fatigue or toxin elimination issues that often go hand in hand with low vitamin B12. 
For more info, just open the description. It will all be listed there.